gather to celebrate and to mourn the life of the Reverend Dr. Gail Kinney Mulligan. And we begin on the first page of the insert here. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though she die. And everyone who has life and has committed herself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will rise, raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in herself. None becomes her own master when she dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors.
cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Gail, and grant her an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. The word of the Lord. I'm changing the song. This is for Gail and the Daughters of Sue. saying that I'm going to read a little bit of a poem by Antonio Machado from Spain. 
caminante no hay camino. Caminante son tus huellas, el camino y nada más. Caminante no hay camino, se hace camino al andar. Al andar se hace el camino. <coughs> Y al, volver, y al volver la vista atrás, se ve la senda que nunca se ha de volver a pisar. Caminante no hay camino, sino estelas en la mar. Joined together and sang Psalm 23. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and that I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Invite Father Pierre, who was a seminarian, with uh, Gail to share the gospel with us. Please rise if you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. I am the Good Shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the sheep, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I am for the sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I was asked to say a few words. This is not the sermon but just uh, a few words on Gail. I remember when I started the process for the ordained ministry in 1986, and I was asked to tell them, or to tell the to in my biographical note, to, if there was one biblical passage that could be presented as the keystone or the, that would be a good summary of my call to ministry. And I referred to the passage that is quoted here, but in Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor and so on and so forth. And in 1988 or 87 when I I had the privilege to meet Gail. I really found in her someone who lived out the words in that gospel. Someone who was indeed passionate in every meaning of the word about social justice. So Gail didn't simply speak of the mandate to preach the good news to the poor, to care for those who I would call the, the forgotten one, the ones, the rejected of society. She made it her goal 
her duty to live her life as one who fought the good fight every day. When I reflect, there are so many passages that come to mind when I reflect on Gail's ministry, and I consider her my mentor for sort of justice. I learned so much from her. He, uh, from 88, 89, and 90, every summer, I will come, and Carlos and I and others will be engaged in ministry with Gail, doing ministry. And it was very challenging at that time. But somehow, her spirit instilled in us something that gave us a bold approach to ministry that we had no fear. There is a Negro spiritual. If I can touch somebody as I travel alone, then my living shall not be in vain. When I speak of Gail, when I think of Gail, one thing that gives me great comfort is that I knew her living was never in vain. As she traveled alone, she taught not just somebody, but she touched many lives. She lived her life for God and for others. And today, I'm thankful to know and to share with you that indeed she lived her life to the fullest and her living was not in vain. say um, a friend, my boss at one time, Gail, well, the woman that I speak of, that I think of who I am. When I think of the passage of what I was thinking about, I was thinking about it says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I had no clothes, you clothed me. When I think of Gail, I think of Gail in that way. When I met Gail, I met Gail on 299. That was when the ministry was very small, not big as it is now. And I had went there with my mom to go get some food. Yeah, yeah, we were going through some bad times. And when I got there, Gail was there as usual. And I remember um, they took care of that situation, the food situation. And I remember Gail came in, and she had me some tickets. And I'm like, and it was a Broadway play. It's called The Piano Man. And uh, um, uh, uh, one of the workers was Donna Robinson. That was her administrator at the time. And I was like, Broadway play, ticket? Why is she giving it to me? And Gail said, because I want you to go. I said, go to New York City? I'm a real country girl. <laughs> I was like, to the wrong person. She said, yes, I want you to go, Ruth. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Donna go with you. Cause she'll always tell you stuff. She, she just wouldn't kind of uh, uh, make a uh, 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 plan. She was kind of make plans for you. So I said, okay. So she gave me these tickets to the Broadway play, Piano. And for a country girl, coming out of the Marlboro area, that was the first time I'd ever experienced anything like that in my life. In other words, that was the first time that someone had touched and let me know that it was something higher for me than I could ever knew. And after that, I went later on. I was in the car with Gail. And she came by my house and picked me up. I said, Gail, where are we going? She said, I'm taking you somewhere. I said, well, and we ended up in New York City. And it was at the New York the 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 Theology School for uh, Ministry. I think it was, I, I would have been uh, Episcopal Priest. And Gail says, that's what you're going to do. I said, no, Gail, I'm not for the ministry. I'm not going to do none of that. She said, oh, yes, you are. 
So we walked up the, the building, he walked in and she introduced me. Message you're already taken care of. So we just want to know if you're really serious about it, we're going to uh, enroll you in, in, in the school here. And I looked at, on the way back, I looked at Gail, I was like, I don't have no intention of doing that. She said, maybe you don't know it now, Ruth. She said, but I see the tension in you. She's seen something in me when I couldn't see it myself. But I would have been lost as just a little, little girl running around thinking that life didn't owe me everything but it, nothing I could do to take anything from life. Gail was a person that gave, moved back, and allowed you to be seen. And then all of a sudden we came to Gail one time and we had, and it was this group and of women and, I, and my mom, Betty Monroe and myself, and I said, we need this group. I said, the, the, the rural women are so down and, and, and we have no one to talk to and I seen all the problems that was happening. And I went to Gail and I said, Gail, if I get this group, I said, Gail, can you do this group for me? Gail said, what group? I told her, I said, we want to make a group. She said, okay. And she said, uh, I'll get the place. You just bring the ladies. 30 some years ago, we showed up in New Paul's at Episcopal Church and Gail showed up with us. 30 some women came out for that meeting. Rural women, migrant women, farm women. And we sat there and we was waiting as usual for Gail to run the program. Come on Gail, you know, we, I got it together, now you do it. And Gail sat there too. 30 minutes went by and we waited and everybody's looking at each other. And all of a sudden Gail said to me, I said, Gail, they're waiting. She said, I am too. I said, what do you mean? She said, didn't you say you wanted a women's support group? I said, yes. She said, well, I'm at a women's support group. In other words, she said, I wasn't here to be your boss. I wasn't here to be your friend. I was here to be part of this rural women's support group because I was in the rural area. I worked in the rural area. My life was the rural area, was the rural people, was making changes in their lives. So that's, we sat there, we thought of a name, Daughters of Sarah. And that's how Daughters of Sarah, the group, began over 30 years ago. And I just want to share this part about how it became so real. Because when we got ready, the girl got ready to leave the ministry and go start her new adventure, Panama and different stuff. She called me up and she said, Ruth, I'm at the diner and I need my Daughters of Sarah. Can they meet me here at the diner? And we're thinking, it's just Gail. Gail's the boss. She, what are you, what's she called us for? And honestly, none of us showed up. Because we just thought, Gail just wanted to talk. I don't know, we don't know what it is. The next day, Gail called us up individually and she told us all off. <laughs> Mainly she called me up. She said, Ruth, if you're gonna do something, do it from your heart and do the best that you can do. She said, I sat at that diner for one hour. She, I said, but yeah, Gail, I said, but you, you was the, you're the boss. You're the, she said, no, I sat at the diner for my daughters of Sarah for one hour because I was part of Daughters of Sarah. I had never felt that in my life, that someone that had that power, someone that had Gail, could need us. And she said, I needed my sisters. And don't ever let another sister fail ever again. And that's why sometimes people look at me and wonder why I don't care if it's just me standing. I stand for Daughters of Sarah because Gail loved it, prayed over it and, and decided that whatever we had to do, she said, continue that to go on. Gail was a woman that would bring people together from all different sources, all different places, and would make us feel like we was one, in one room like we're here today. It was no color, it was no uh, 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 separation with finance, it was none of that with Gail. Gail became my friend. Even though she was my boss, she was my friend, the person that I would ride with, I would talk with, I would cry with. The person that I loved, the person that when she was adopting her children and she had no one to talk to, she would get me in the car. She was the person that took me when I met the Linzettas. And she rode riding me up this big mountain. Where are we going, Gail? She said, I'm going to take us with my friends. And I end up there and my life began. I meet the Linzettas. Take me up, I meet I, 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 Becky, we met, I met through Gail. Because Gail started a camp. When she started that camp, she said, you know what? Let's just do it, Ruth. Next thing I knew, I, I, I'm doing it. And everything I could say in my life, it was because she spoke it into my life. I don't know a lot of you know that, now. I am a preacher, I'm a minister. She spoke that I, years ago, but I was like not even there. So I just want to leave something saying that I got some of the daughters Sarah here, 
And I know it wasn't on here, but I know it's one song, if I could get permission to do that. Uh, victory is mine. Come on, somebody. Victory has always been Gail's. And I want to ask the daughter of Sarah to come up. And we're going to just sing that with, with uh, Janine. She's coming already. Victory is mine. Because with Gail, victory was hers. She didn't know the word no. She didn't know the word that you wasn't my friend. She didn't know the word that we couldn't do it. And she taught me that. Everything is possible. Christ taught us that. All things are possible. So we're going to sing this song, and you're going to see this group of ladies. Two ladies are going to sing it for us, but the other one's going to stand up. And you're going to see 30 years later, the, uh, we have left mothers and grandmothers have gone on. But this third generation of daughters of Sarah stand there now. And I am so proud. And I remember when the 25th anniversary of the Real Mega Ministry, Gail came and she said, I never thought that this dream would still be continuing. She was about dreams continuing. So we are asking ladies to come up at this time, and we're going to sing, and we want you all to join in with us. Victory is mine, because I know Gail would want this to say. Gail was a person that kind of changed things. This is Episcopal service, but Gail knows a little Pentecostal. I'm telling you, she was, she was talking, you know. I never did the Eucharist before, and Gail got it all together. And I was, Gail, what are we doing? She said, we're getting ready to have it. I said, I, we, we, we don't do that. She said, I know, Pentecostals don't do it, but we do it. Amen. So, oh, you guys want to come up? I guess you can stand right, right, just kind of right here a little bit. Thank you, ladies. These are the third generation of the daughters of Sarah. And um, I know Gail is smiling down when she sees my daughter and Mary's niece and Paulette's daughter. These are ladies that have passed away, but they're going to sing this song, Victory shall be mine. And this is going to be an honor of Gail to know that she was a woman that believed and a woman that I believe that the ministry and while we're sitting here because she touched all of our lives because she wasn't a woman to give up. She was an Esther. If I die, let me die. Victory, victory shall be mine. Whoa, victory, victory. Victory shall be mine if I Becky and with uh, the Lanzettas and for everybody who's here. 
I'm going to be a little bit more staid because I'm just an Episcopalian. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, Ruth said, that Gail had a way of looking at you and seeing something in you that you hadn't seen before. Uh, I know that from experience. Uh, sometimes I thought, Gail, no, you're a little over the top, honey, with, with me. But she did have that way of just intently looking at you. Now, you have to excuse me because I'm a preacher, as well as Ruth, and I've, I've been working on a sermon for tomorrow, right? And the gospel for tomorrow is this amazing piece from the gospel according to John. And it talks about how in Jerusalem all these uh, uh, Greeks had come in for the Passover. They came from the uh, places, not the inner core, but the margins, right? And they came in and uh, they said, they heard this guy Philip talking in Greek and they said, well, we can ask him this burning question we have. And the question was, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. And when you think about it, that's what we all are asking for. We want to see Jesus. The other part of that is that when Jesus heard their question, he answered them by talking about his death and the words of a parable. And you've heard this parable told in many different ways in both all four of the Gospels. And John says, unless a seed falls to the ground, it will not bear fruit is talking about his dying and pointing to his rising. And he's also implying <clears throat> about our dying and our rising. A dying that doesn't have to happen just at the end of our mortal lives, but a dying that happens hopefully day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. So I think about Gail and these words from the Gospel of John. I think that they were probably imprinted in her heart. Gail was a woman whose mission was to seek Jesus, to see Jesus. And I think that's what gave her the power to look deeply into all of us. She looked for Jesus in those who practiced mercy. She looked for Jesus in those people who were afraid, but had the, had the capacity to live life fully. She looked for Jesus in those who lived in the oppressive juggernaut of economically powerful systems. She was, in all of this, a gentle soul with a vigorous spirit, but it was her mission always to see Jesus. Gail and I were ordained not at the same time and not in the same diocese, but somewhere in the first decade of women priests throughout the country. And while I was in parish ministry, Gail was up here in a land that was totally foreign to me, called the Mid-Hudson region. <laughs> she was there to raise up the rural and migrant ministry. Now, I didn't know much about RMM at the time, but that changed in the mid-1990s when Gail and I found ourselves in New York Theological Seminary in their Doctor of Ministry class. And for every Monday, for an entire year, Gail and I would arrive, she from Poughkeepsie, me from Katona, to join this class of interesting, inquiring people about social justice. So we studied together, we prayed together, and then at the end of a very long day, we both walked up to Grand Central Station, she on her way home to Poughkeepsie and her beloved Jim, and I on my way to Katona, to forge another evening with my husband. Over the years, we forged a great friendship that extended to our husbands, Jim and Bob. 
I was always on a learning curve about justice theology. To Gail, it seemed to come naturally. It was in her bones. It was in her heart. It made up her soul. She practically sang with justice bells and whistles. Her insights that came to her were not just from book learning, but forged on the ground of experience that was so much of her being, and a deep spirituality that really resonated to the Good Shepherd, to the seed that needs to die in order to bear much fruit. There was nothing false about Gail. She was a genuine lover of souls. She and Jim took off to live in Cologne, Panama, and blessedly, Father Cater wrote a magnificent and very detailed account of what that ministry is about. It's in the inside of your bulletin. It was a challenging ministry for anyone conscious of how the majority of Panamanians lived in order to construct a canal. The canal may have joined two oceans, making shipping more accessible and more economical, but it impoverished thousands of native people. And it was Gail's task to minister, to encourage and comfort, empower and enrich the lives of people in Cologne with the promise of the gospel. It was her, her calling and she sought it wherever God called her to be. I love the hymn that we sang at the beginning of this service. I sing a song of the saints of God. I have to believe that Gail chose that. It's so simple. It's so almost, uh, I'm going to say childlike, not childish, but childlike. It's so Gail, and it's so honest about who she was. That's, she didn't want to be a saint, but she recognized the holiness in other people all the time. What I most remember about her is her extraordinary smile, her gentle and forgiving laughter, and her doggedness. It was not to everybody's liking, but you see, what she was after all the time was to see Jesus. And those with eyes see well, she carried on forging a path that some day we might all see that was so very clear to her. And we are very grateful for her, for her ministry, for her beloved husband, Jim, for her gorgeous daughter, Katie, for James. We are grateful even in our nearsightedness. We sing a song of the saints of God. We sing of Gail Keeney Mulligan. Amen. I'm going to be a little less formal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'd like to share with you, however, a vignette. I wish I had known uh, Gail and Jim better than I had the chance. I only knew them very briefly. But uh, in 1986, we formed a, an organization here called Dignity Integrity Mid-Hudson, uh, whose function was to uh, minister to the uh, gay and lesbian community, uh, which was very much in the closet in those days. <coughs> Excuse me. On the, uh, I, I'm sorry, I should have introduced myself. I'm Phil Nicholson, and uh, my husband and I have been together for uh, 30, a little over 30 years now. Uh, on our second anniversary together, Gail and Jim celebrated the Mass, the Eucharist, for us at Dignity and Integrity Mid-Hudson. Uh, totally out of surprise, they called Hans and myself forward and blessed our union. Uh, this was at a time, well, let me tell you that uh, on our 10th and 20th anniversaries, Bishop Roscombe celebrated the Eucharist for us in, in festive 
circumstances at Holy Trinity in Pauling, but she was unable, under orders from her diocesan bishop, she was unable to express the blessing of our union. On our 30th anniversary, she offered to do so, now that the church recognizes same-sex unions, but was not able because Hans has lost his faith, unfortunately. However, uh, on the second anniversary of our togetherness, uh, Gail and Jim blessed our union, and we will go to our graves remembering with fondness the feel of the stole wrapped around our four wrists. It was a wonderful experience, and thank you, Gail. I want to thank Pierre and Ruth and Deborah and Phil. And I know that many of us have many other stories to tell, and following the service, we can gather in the Newton community room and, and share some of those stories and live in the Gale spirit. I just want to add one last piece to the vignette, and folks had wonderful ways of capturing all the words that I wanted to hold up. Um, Gail was my predecessor at Rural and Migrant Ministry, and I watched her for years when I was here at Christ Church, and at that point, Rural Migrant Ministry was next door in what was called the parish house, now the rectory. And Gail had this wonderful way of, she was intriguingly subtle with an iron fist. She had that laid back Wyoming demeanor as she lived into a passionate determination to see the just treatment about us. And we've heard stories about all that. One of the things that Ruth gave us a glimpse of was Gail's creative efforts. And I want to hold up that Gail, in the midst of her sort of flowing through our lives, planted those seeds that Deborah alluded to, planted those seeds that led to the creation of an overnight leadership camp that has now touched over 3,000 young people through the years. Planted those seeds that led to the creation of Daughters of Sarah, which not only led to the creation of Daughters of Sarah, but led to the creation, ultimately, of a statewide rural women's assembly that has welcomed hundreds of people and has in turn led to the creation of other women's groups. Working with Carlos and Diego and others helped create the Independent Farm Workers Center that then led to the creation of and the passage of laws that provided drinking water and field sanitation for thousands of farm workers across New York State. Gail had this wonderful way of planting seeds and moving on, and you didn't really get the chance to see the benefit of it until years later. And so we gathered today to celebrate uh, that phenomenal orchard that Gail created. And we at RMM have worked very hard to live into Gail's vision and expectation, which is really Christ's vision and expectation. And we have all been the better for that. Amen. Yeah. Let's join together, I think. Yeah. Let's join together in another subtle Episcopal hymn that when you pay attention to the words, you go, whoa.
let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Gail, and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. We give thanks for the ministry of Gail among the good people in Connecticut, Oklahoma, Panama, the Rural and Migrant Ministry, and the parishes and dioceses of Rochester and New York. Hear us, Lord. May all who were touched by Gail's presence continue to be moved to share the spirit of love and justice amongst others, especially as we move among those who are disenfranchised and marginalized. Hear us, Lord. May our love for Gail be felt by her children. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister, our visionary, our provocateur. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Gail, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A couple of quickies. Uh, great thanks to uh, Janine and to James for being present with us. Uh, Fred Cartier is uh, filming this gathering, and uh, if you'd like to have a disc of this gathering, uh, you can talk to Fred and he can tell you about that. And in a few days it will be uploaded, downloaded, uploaded, uh, to YouTube and that will enable us to share it with Gail's family uh, and friends who gathered uh, before us uh, in Colorado for uh, Gail's uh, funeral. And uh, so we, we are here in their spirit uh, today. Um, as I mentioned, following, please join us for a reception. Thanks to Cindy and to Becky and Jane Konitz for helping put that together, and a special thanks to Becky for enabling us to be here, and for Cindy for helping initiate this, and for all of you uh, being uh, present today. Uh, we're going to gather in a moment for uh, communion, and what I would suggest is, if you're able, bring your program with us. We'll form, because this is so Gale, we'll form a circle here, We'll pass the bread from one to another. Everybody's welcome, no matter where your journey in Christ is, to receive communion. And uh, Becky will bring the chalice around there so that that way it doesn't go flying all over the place. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. Oh, the bread uh, is Irish soda bread. Gail Keeney, Malvin. Okay, uh, but if you're gluten-free, uh, let me know, and we have gluten-free. I think I've got it all. Uh, before all that, though, the peace of God may it be with you this day and every day in the spirit of Gale. And also with you. And walk in love as Christ walked in among us and gave of himself in an offering sacrifice to all.
Ages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By His blood, you reconciled us. By His wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked with you in hope including our sister Gail, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so God, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. That the following words concerning, oops. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our four parents, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rachel, Rebecca, and Leah, and of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table only for solace and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Praise the Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Friends, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And have given us for a taste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort and affliction and a pledge of our inheritance and kingdom. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the rain fall soft upon your fields and the sun shine warm upon your face. And until we are held, gathered together again, may you be held in the palm of God's hand. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 And we'll, we'll move on out to this wonderful zippy hymn in the spirit of Gale and uh, gather for more Irish soda bread <laughs> and other things in the Newton community room through that door.